Today we are installing Decorator's Rapid Rail. If you watch this video, you won't need these. So step one, they say measure from the deck three inches up. So it's a little difficult to do that with the bottom plate on for the post. So what I did was I just basically screwed two two by fours together. That gives you your perfect three inches and then the bracket sits right on top of that. That is step one. So all you do is center the bracket on the board and mark these two holes. Now on this particular rail, we are doing a cocktail rail, meaning the board's going on top. So as you can see, I already cut this. This is cut at 36 inches. So all I got to do is put this on the top here and mark these two holes. Then you take a 1 8 metal bit and pre-drill for the screws. You get this kit you get all these different screws the bigger screws go into the post the smaller screws go into the rails so i'm going to grab two of these they're t20s so you want to make sure you have a t20 bit and repeat the process on the other side so as you see this is a full-size post i mark 36 inches right here so you get this bracket, put it right on top, and mark your two screw holes. When installing railings, lining up the balusters is the hardest, most important part. So when you buy the kit, you get this eight foot rail. So essentially what you wanna do is line it up so that the spacing between this and the post and this baluster and the post are exactly the same. So depending upon the size of your railing, it's obviously gonna differ. So I already have my first one pre-cut, just like that. So the spacing between the last baluster and the post and the last baluster and the post are exactly the same. So this is the top of the bottom rail. So now I'm going to go cut the bottom of the bottom rail. So now that, that my bottom rail is cut, I need to transfer those lines over to my top rail. The way I do that is I just take it, flip it over and line up the hole. So you go like this, mark the end, and mark the end. So now I know that when I install this at the top, both baluster holes will line up exactly. You can just measure this and transfer the line, or what I do is I just put it on, make sure that end's lined up, and then just transfer the line on this side. Repeat the process for the top. So when cutting aluminum, it is imperative that you have a non ferrous blade on your miter saw. This is very dangerous because obviously shards of metal are gonna go everywhere. So definitely make sure you wear your eye protection. You can see that's my line. This is the piece that I'm getting rid of. So you can put an X on that and you wanna make sure you cut on the opposite side of the line that you're keeping. Good. So this is the bottom of the top rail. So you can't just measure it and cut it because again, the balusters have to line up. So as you can see here, I have a line right here. And on this side, I have a line right there. I must cut on that to make sure that they correspond and work properly with the bottom rail. Now with the rails cut, we're ready to install the crush blocks. Now on an eight foot rail, it comes with two. With a six foot rail, it only comes with one. So what I do is I measure the bottom rail. We have 78 and a quarter. So 78 divided by three is 26. So I'll add on an eighth. So 26 and an eighth, and I'll mark that. Flip the tape around, 26 and an eighth. I'll mark that. Now, this is a fancy square. You don't need this, but um, all you need to do is mark one inch in the center. So now I have my two marks. You take your 1 8 inch drill bit and pre-drill it. So 
So something that isn't in the directions is they don't tell you you need a square two bit. So there's four screws with a square two that you need to attach the crusher blocks with. So you need a T20 bit, a 1 8 drill bit, and a P2. Now there's a bunch of ways to do this. The easiest and fastest way I found is I actually just put the crusher blocks on, put them down, and then mark them. So that way you can attach the bottom base. Some guys don't attach the bottom base, but for this we will. So all I do is just mark the sides with a little pencil mark. Take this off. Drop the screw in. Find the center of the block. Drill that down. So now you're ready for assembly. You put, slide these down. And then you take your 1 8 inch drill bit and pre-drill the bottom over here and the bottom over there to install these small screws. Now when you drill this, you want to drill it on a slight angle upward. Switch back over to your T20 and install the small screws. Now this is a Milwaukee. On this drill, you can see there's one, two, three, and this is actually a self-tapping mode. As you can see, I'm currently in the self-tapping mode. I would highly recommend it when installing these screws. All right, once that's done, you take the top of your bottom rail and just snap it in place. All right, now you're ready to install the top rail. All you need to do is the same thing. Drill these four holes underneath and put the screws in. All right, now that everything's pre-drilled, we'll put our screws in. So per the directions, it says to slide down from the top. If you have the ability, I think this is a lot easier. You slide in through the bottom and then lock it into place. All the way down. Once all the balusters are installed, they recommend a rubber mallet. I'm using my stiletto with a rubber and you just bang them down. Now we're ready to install the top. So when installing the top rail, I found it a lot easier to start on the end. This has a lot of give because the locking mechanism's in this part. So if you start at the end and work your way down, it snaps right into place. And this is what the finished product looks like. Finish it off. You just slide these brackets right on top.